Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we've walked from Canteel to Calstock. <laughs> to help us grow our channel, please subscribe. So we've parked in the National Trust car park at Cateel. We're going to walk from here to Calstock. So this is a National Trust car park here at Cateel. It's £3 if you're parking all day and it's free if you're a National Trust member. Our walk today is taken from Short Walks in Cornwall. It's number four, Cateel and Calstock. Calstock is in the southeast of Cornwall on the Tamar River. This route explores a section of the River Tamar and passes through the historic village of Calstock, providing varied walking through woodlands and along the riverbank. And it tells me that part of the route follows the waymarked Tamar Valley Discovery Trail, and the walk will give you a feel for the historical importance of the River Tamar. So our instructions tell us to take the path running alongside the car park. We're going to walk through this woodland that's part of the Cateel Estate all the way down. Well, we're following the River Tamar upriver, aren't we, to Calstock? Just about in Cornwall. So, yeah, he's put me off my stride now. What I was going to say, the book actually suggests that we take a ferry from Calstock back to Cateel Quay, but we're not entirely sure if it's running. So we're going to have to wait until we get there. So we might get wet feet. <laughs> Swim back. Get your armbands. <laughs> The simple single cell chapel in the woods was built in the late 15th century by Sir Richard Edgecombe, the builder of Cateel House, to give thanks for his escape from Richard III in these woods in 1483. So the Edgecombes were for Henry Tudor. Richard III had won a battle and won the throne in 1483, something like that. And because this family was rooting for the other side, Richard III was out to get Lord Edgecombe. This, it's written in Old English, so it's really difficult to read. He put a stone in his cap, stumbled the same into the water while those rangers were fast at his heels, who, looking down after the noise and seeing his cap swimming thereon, supposed that he desperately drowned himself, and that allowed him to escape. We've actually read that before we filmed this, because it is really difficult to read. <laughs> Yeah. We're actually following a path that runs around the edge of Cateel Estate, the gardens anyway. We've got another video on our channel all about a visit to Cateel, most beautiful Tudor mansion isn't it? Yeah we did visit quite a long time ago at Christmas as well when they put the Christmas garden yeah. up as well and that was, yeah. it's a lovely place to come and explore. Quite nice view, view isn't it? Our instructions tell us after the viewing point to follow the path through the woodland. It's quite rocky actually. <laughs> the route through the woodland has meandered with the river, gone up and down a bit and we're now dropping right back down to river level. An absolutely glorious beech and oak trees throughout this woodland, all just coming into leaf. Where do we go now then? It just basically says continue along the path here following the, uh, the river. Yeah. Uh, walk up as far as the viaduct. Let's go. And here's the remains of the past industry in this area, the lime kilns. Looks like an old railway carriage. Beautiful, isn't it? Penalty of 40 shillings. Brilliant. Love the handles on the doors.
roads are a bit narrow. Nicely done, oh, sir. So, it's our first road junction, Sarah. Yeah, I grabbed the book. What does it say? So it says to turn right. Okay, down the hill. And head towards the quay. These old houses, sir. These, these look these older than old the uh, previous ones we've been walking by, isn't it? I reckon these are George and the other ones were Victorian. We're going to have a little wander around Calstock. Not been here before. It's Bank Holiday Monday, so I don't expect much will be open, but we can have a look. All these old shop windows indicates once upon a time this was the high street. What do you think? It would have been the high street, wouldn't it? Yeah. They've got little signs on saying what they would have been. Oh, have they? Yeah. What's this that? was a branch of Lloyd's. Lloyd's Bank? Yes, oh, and right. it was a shoe shop as well. The Dittons. It was the Midnight Baker. So we're here at Calstock Slipway. No mention of a passenger ferry at all. I think that might have gone bust since the book was written. <laughs> That's not mine. No. You're on a doom bar, sir. Get the punk down. Yeah. Cheers. Well, feeling refreshed after our pub meal. Very nice, the Tamar Inn over there. And now we're going to follow the river, literally on a raised bank for a couple of miles. So those dogs playing on the football field there. Yeah. It's just funny, isn't it? Reminds me where I used to play football, you know. <laughs> what position did you play? I played left back. Left back? Left back in the changing room. Oh. So our book tells us that the reed beds of the Tamar are important wildlife habitats, especially for birds and insect species. They must be elusive. Sarah, why are you whispering? Because I don't want to find the birds. I think you have. They're all flown away. I can hear them. So our little book tells us that Calstock was once a flourishing port shipping copper, tin, arsenic and granite out. The return trade in coal, limestone and dock dung supplied the mining industry, lime kilns and market gardens of the area. Dock dung? Dock dung. <laughs> I can't even say it. So we're just trying to figure this one out, aren't we? You've got the river and the reed bed and then this raised dike, haven't we? And the land falls away quite steeply, what, 10 foot or so? To these beautiful flat pastures. Let me demonstrate. No. I fall down here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so we reckon that they probably reclaimed the river bed and used those lovely flat pastures to grow their fruit, vegetables, and flowers that they sent up to Covent Garden. <laughs> Come on, let's get on. Come on then. I can see a mine stack, an old chimney, just above Andrew's head there. Evidence of the previous mining industry. The Tamar River is known for its abundance of salmon, although when the mining industry was fully active, it did affect the stocks of salmon because of the pollution going into the Tamar at the time. It says to go through the kissing gate, which was obviously done, head up hill through the gate for the Akelta, not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Akelta Wildlife Reserve, 
following a wooded track. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that might make more sense of the name, look. A Kel Tor. Tor is a hill in Devon, isn't it? Well, what's it say then? Mining has taken place in Tamar Valley for centuries. And in the Victorian era, a Kel Tor became one of Calstock's most important mines, producing masses of quantities of copper, arsenic and tin. So there's a lovely board explaining all the different uses of the buildings that you can see in this area. And even a hundred years later, look, the land is barren. Oh, that's the train! I can hear it. It's got to be out there somewhere. Well, we won't get it in this video now. It's every two hours the train goes up and back to Plymouth, so we've missed it for a second time now. <laughs> this building here, they're telling us, is the dressing floor. So that would have been where the stamps were, where they crushed the ore and they separated it out. And behind it is the engine house that drove that machinery. They might be down there. Having a geek? Yes. It's all quite overgrown, isn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful little engine house, isn't it? Slightly newer. Yes, it's brick, isn't it? <coughs> but then they had a brickworks up at Gunners Lake, didn't they? I wonder if any of them are stamped with Gunners Lake on them. There is something stamped into this brick. Oh, I can't make it out. It looks like an S there. Maybe an E. Oh, I'm being called. What are you doing up there? I'm making a YouTube video. The lengths he goes to. We're a bit perplexed, aren't we? So that gate says private, and then there's these Arrow down steps. steep steps down to the riverbed. Oh. At point number six, you can take a, oh, it's a bit of a detour to the mine, which we've just done, and we've gone all the way through. But when you look at the map at number six, not entirely sure where that mining area is. You're going down there, are you? I don't think so. I think we should retrace our steps. Okay, so we've come two or three minutes through woodland and along boardwalks. Detour usually means go back on yourself, doesn't it? Go there as an optional extra. Oh, I think we've reached the river. Quite nice to see the river again, isn't it? They've perused the map. Yes. You know where those steps were? Yeah. We shouldn't have come down the steps. Mm, I kind of had that hunch at the top of the steps. I think we need to turn around. <laughs> we feel like we've been here before. This one. So we've retraced our steps. We're now back onto the original track we were following earlier. Yeah. Heading up here. Looking for a mine stack again, aren't we? Chimney. Going this way. So we've just been climbing for the last five minutes. Steady uphill climb. Tamar Valley is quite steep actually, quite steep sided. Still alive, made it. Nothing to the right, nothing to the left. Check again, all clear, across we go. Is that the railway code? Yeah. Right. Chuffed about that. Let's follow this road until we reach a church, yeah, is that so right? Yeah, follow the lane uphill. Continue along the lane until you reach a church on your right. It's a really pretty country lane, isn't it? All of the glass houses. And there is the produce on its way to market. We haven't seen a soul out on this walk, really, since we left Calstock, have we, Sarah? No, Calstock was quite nice and busy, wasn't it? And I had a lovely atmosphere, but... Not a soul since, really. Very tranquil and quiet. Growing strawberries on a pallet, Sarah. That's quite a good tip, isn't it? I like that. OK, 
can imagine when they're all all ready for picking. Yeah. Brilliant. We've climbed some distance uphill, haven't we, Sarah? Yeah, I feel as though we're right at the top of the hill and you can see miles. Beautiful views up, isn't it? They look like little doll's houses in Devon, don't they? So far away. Perhaps they're really tiny up there. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's us Cornish that are tiny. Oh, yeah. Pixies. St Andrew's Church. Oh, pretty. Similar to Lost Withiel Churchyard, they've taken all the gravestones and lined the like boundary wall with them. And then the grass around the church, nearly bare. Little guide. It also says it's not known exactly when the church was built. Um, it says in any case the work spread over a century or two before the building took its present shape, but the nave, the central part of the building, was probably built around the 1290s. And in 1864 there were 321 funerals, almost one a day for a year, from a cholera epidemic. Of this number, 168 were children under the age of 10, including two of the then rector's own children. Oh, that's sad. So lucky, aren't we, these days that we just take all this for granted that we won't go down with cholera or typhoid, and that kind of brings it home to you, doesn't it? So, our guidebook offers us a curious fact about the porch here at St Andrew's Church and says it's one of the only churches to have a fireplace, was that right? 15th century St Andrew's Church is unusual for having a stone fireplace in its porch. Hmm. It's either an unusual looking fireplace or I'm missing something then. <laughs> it was right behind me, look, 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 look. Oh yeah! <laughs> God, I wouldn't have even seen that. No! Yes, there is, isn't it? So St Andrew's Behind Church offers room. you a warm welcome. Oh, very good. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> oh, I didn't even see it there behind the umbrellas. So as you leave the church, we're going to take the downhill back to Calstock. So we've established there's no ferry here at the moment. Whether it's here in the summer, we'll leave that for you to find out. So that means that we're gonna to have to retrace our steps back through the valley, under the viaduct, and hug the river back to the car park. Yeah, the way we first came in it. In all fairness to the book, they do suggest that you can just uh, retrace your steps, don't they? Yeah. Our walk today is taken from Short Walks in Cornwall. It's number four, Cateel and Cowstock. Quick look at the map, you start here in the lower Cateel car park, hug the River Tamar all the way to explore a mine, and then you gradually ascend up to the headland, falling back into Cowstock itself. Unfortunately, I don't think the ferry is available at the moment, so we had to retrace our steps along the River Tamar. Our brilliant walk today, we follow the River Tamar to Calstock. Yeah, from Cateel. It's brilliant. And then we looped around a bit further, took in a mine, a church, came back to Calstock. I've really had a fantastic day. Yeah, I've been wanting to look at the viaduct here at Calstock for a long time and it didn't disappoint. It was brilliant. There's a lot of extra information in this book. They've really researched things. We haven't touched on half of it. There was a moment where we could have done with a retrace your step. 
think we need to turn around. <laughs> We've, we managed to get back on track fairly easily. With the map and the instructions, it's worked really well. So what would you score it? Uh, for me, it's a nine out of 10. Yeah, I think it is, nine out of 10. Yeah.